Rob Oakshot, will you continue to support the government given these latest allegations surrounding Peter Slipper, the Speaker? Yeah, they are separate. The, uh, the question of the Speaker is one for the Parliament. Um, so the question of uh, supply and confidence in government is a separate question. Um, and uh, uh, I'm open-minded on a no-confidence motion that may come before the House uh, in May in regards to speakership, uh, but in no way does this, in my mind, draw any conclusions in regards to supply and confidence in government. Has Tony Abbott given you a call about this? No. Are you expecting one soon? No. <laughs> The opposition leader says Peter Slipper should stand aside from the job until both civil and criminal matters are dealt with. Do you agree on that? Uh, well, I think he's done the right thing by standing aside. Um, and it is not for uh, me or any member of parliament to reflect on court proceedings or indeed um, you know, of a criminal or civil matter or indeed I think uh, some of the moral questions as salacious and ugly as they might read in weekend newspapers. Um, so uh, I acknowledge Peter Slipper has vigorously denied all allegations against him and I would hope this is not trial by media. I still hope we live in a country where people are innocent until proven guilty, even if they are uh, high profile members of parliament holding the highest office in the Australian parliament. So that process needs to play itself uh, out um, and uh, the question then of uh, whether he, um, uh, you know, all allegations are concluded and returns to the speakership, I think, is one that um, will play itself out via the court proceedings, both civil and criminal, um, that uh, I think will get more of a handle on exactly what is going on over the coming weeks. Uh, the government today has said it, it would like, and it thinks that the criminal matters regarding the allegations regarding the, the cab charge misuse can be uh, sorted out fairly quickly, but that the civil matters regarding the claims of sexual harassment may take some time and have indicated that should the criminal matters be resolved in Mr Slipper's favour, that you know they could see his way to coming back to fill the Speaker's job. Would you feel comfortable in that instance? If all matters are concluded uh, where he is innocent, uh, yes, I the, would. The criminal matters, but, both criminal this? and civil. But if if the civil matters are ongoing, I think, I think we all need to allow those civil matters to play themselves out. Like we have seen a handful of text messages in regard to those uh, civil matters, and we are aware um, of allegations because they're also against the Commonwealth of allegations made uh, in two thousand and two. Uh, where the Howard Ministry was aware of issues uh, that um, seemed to indicate a, a pattern of behaviour if there's any truth in any of the allegations. So we need to allow uh, the federal court filing uh, to play itself out where we start to get all the facts, not just a handful of facts, not just half the story, and not just a handful of texts, when there's probably hundreds of texts that we, um, you know, for court proceedings, they need to go through. I think it is incredibly unfair if we set a standard, not only for politicians, but for people generally in Australia, where a federal court filing uh, then sets the standard. Uh, there is no police charges at all that I am aware of, let alone uh, any successful prosecution on any of those charges. So we, uh, if we make this the standard, uh, any Australian citizen could make any allegation against any politician and we're all expected to stand down. I think we're setting an incredibly dangerous precedent if that's the standard we set. To be absolutely crystal clear, you're saying that Peter Slipper should be stood aside until the civil matters are also dealt with. Well, I think over the between now and when Parliament returns on the eighth of May, I think we will become a, a lot more clear on um, some of the depth in those civil matters, where they are, whether they are malicious allegations from a former rogue employee, which happens a lot in politics, uh, or whether there are issues of substance uh, that do um, leave a case to be answered. If it's the first, um, look, I think we put them to one side and make sure the criminal matters are dealt with adequately uh, and then the Speaker continues in the job. If they are the latter, if they are of substance, once all of us know what the full story is, um, I think you know there is a case where both the civil and the criminal matters uh, need to be dealt with before the Speaker returns. 
Mr Abbott says that this is also a question about the Prime Minister's judgment and her integrity to install him as the Speaker. In hindsight, do you think it was a wise idea to put him in the job? Uh, again, that's based on the premise that the allegations are true. But if the allegations are true, um, you know, th- this is, um, I think, a sad... In fact, I think it's the darkest days of this 43rd Parliament um, where um, both sides of politics uh, would, you know, arguably, um, if the allegations are true, um, trying to play evil genius on each other and have both outsmarted each other. This isn't, you know, for, on the Labor Party side, uh, it is a criticism of them that in the final sitting week of last year, if these allegations are true and if um, the rumours that have done this uh, building for some time uh, prove themselves uh, to be accurate, um, then uh, they have done themselves and this parliament a disservice. On the LNP side, uh, the, the the allegations that this goes back to 2002, if not beyond, um, which has led to uh, the uh, uh, case being put against the Commonwealth, not only uh, against the Speaker's office. Um, you know, they also have a case to answer in a failed pre-selection process uh, that has allowed this situation to arise. So. I am frustrated, despondent, uh, pretty angry um, and uh, hope we can get on with the business of why we all come to Canberra and that is uh, the policy work on behalf of the nation and we're a long way from that today. You said that you wanted this parliament to be the sunshine parliament and to lift the integrity and standards of parliament. What does this all say about that? Well, ironically, um, it has taken this parliament to out Uh, some of this uh, and to uncover uh, some of the issues of both members of the LNP and members of the ALP who have prior to pre-selection obviously had a case to answer if uh, in the latest instance the allegations do in any way prove true. Um, I don't expect the 43rd Parliament to win any gold medals for that however. Uh, I think uh, uh, you know, the shameless irony will be that both sides will go to the next election saying, um, you know, we need to have a one-party system again and a majority rule because that last 43rd Parliament uh, had too many scandals. Um, In many ways, this Parliament's cleaning up uh, many of the scandals of the last decade. It is, but as you've just said, the people, and you know, this is a point that Tony Abbott's been picking up on, the public is rightly sick and tired of this and they're not much listening to what goes on in Canberra anymore. Do you think you know, this could be the end of minority government, this could be the end of voters choosing independence because they've just had enough? Oh, who knows? Uh, and people will make their decisions at the ballot box, but I invite, regardless of whether you vote for political parties or crossbenchers, Greens, independents, I invite every single Australian not only to participate participate in parliament and politics post-elections, but to participate prior to the election, we need to have due diligence on all MPs prior to elections, and then there is greater ownership of the result. Um, This is a democratically elected parliament, elected by all Australians, um, but there is a frustration that some due diligence in some seats looks not to have taken place uh, in a way that allows this parliament to have a bit of ownership of all of us. Um, So... You know, it's over to the Australian people whenever the next election is to make sure in your electorate, your one 150th slice of Australia, um, that you make sure the person you elect to represent you uh, is someone of substance and character, regardless of their political persuasion. You hinted as much before. Do you think the government is being distracted from doing its job of actually governing with allegations, these the Peter Slipper allegations, the Craig Thompson allegations? Yeah, of course. Um, these sort of issues... Um, rock any government and uh, this doesn't help and it doesn't help the parliament either whilst this is um, something that certainly you know I just heard an interview from Prime Minister Gillard in I think she was in Singapore Um, really this is an issue for all MPs in the parliament and it does affect uh, it does brand damage to all of us it does brand damage to the parliament uh, and I would hope we can get on with the business of being local members parliamentarians uh, and allow uh, as soon as possible and allow an uh, executive government to get on with the job of doing their ministerial duties as soon as possible. This sort of stuff does not help at all. You said right at the outset that you would be open to considering a motion of no confidence. What would it take for you to support such a motion? 
of no confidence in the Speaker or in, 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 in executive government. government or in the Prime Minister. In the- <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's different, you know, look, it, it would be the nature of the debate as it occurred. Uh, obviously, in regards to executive government and the Prime Minister, I go back to uh, 2010, uh, and the, the response then was maladministration and corruption. Uh, at, at this point, uh, there is no evidence of maladministration, gross maladministration or corruption uh, in any minister uh, or the prime minister. Um, so, uh, you know, that is the standard in regards executive government and the prime minister. However, in regards to speaker, if the coalition or anyone else in the parliament brings on a debate of no confidence uh, on the 8th of May or in that week, uh, I will listen to that debate. I'll probably participate in that debate, and I think we'll have a better read of, in particular, the civil issues uh, by then to know whether they are of substance or uh, whether they're you know, m- malicious claims of a rogue employee. Thanks for your time. Okay, thank you.